CBS TV. Welcome to another installment of WGS TV right here on YouTube.com slash WrestleGamer and ZFX TV. I'm the Russell Gamer. Double B, Bully Blue Trump. Got a couple of guys to introduce you to. First off, he is the master of Rocket Ways 11294. Chris Rogers is here. Chris, how you doing? I got fired, so I'm able to watch Raw. Praise the Lord. And he is an Instagib game show guru in James. James, how you doing? Fuck the movies. Well, so you Monday Night Raw for the week of June 17th, 2013, and we this is the, the Fallout show from Payback, and, uh, well, James, you, you're going to have to help me out a little bit, just because, uh, you, you know, your old friend, the Russell Gamer, didn't have the uh, the opportunity to watch Payback l last night because of uh, some, some uh, things that came up, so... Um, now we see Del Rio come out, and he he's being booed. Now for for someone like me, who didn't see Payback, um, you know what was the cause of the heel turn that we obviously obviously saw in this opening promo with Del Rio? What exactly well, happened? So this this is what happened during the match. Um, Del Rio was aiming for the head of Ziggler, and we know Ziggler just came back from a concussion. So, so it's like repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly. Going, uh, Del Rio was going for the head, going for the head, going for the but head. That, but Audit James, tape. that's actually where it, it was really smart because I mean, how do you, how else do you expect him to win by thumb wrestling? <laughs> <laughs> but then it's like, um, you know, but then so it's the crowd. The crowd started booing Del Rio and cheering for Ziggler, and then to the point where like after after the last kick, after Del Rio got the one, two, three, you still hear cheers. But then there was a lot of people booing, you know. And then when Ziggler was getting uh, helped out to the back, it was like they were chanting Ziggler, Ziggler, and all that stuff. And then the real came out against like, you know, I did this for y'all. You know, show me some respect. You know, I am your champion. And you know, that's what happened, really. They, pro they probably didn't like it because of the fact that Ziggler got that. Anyway, anyway, now as soon as uh, Dario uh, starts cutting his heel promo, out comes CM Punk, who to me looks like he could be the stunt double for Hugh Jackman in Wolverine, and basically starts cutting a face promo, and basically turning face right then and there, and and not only that, but the follow-up backstage, in a sense. CM Punk dumps Paul Heyman, you know, saying, "You know what? You almost cost me the match against Chris Jericho last night at Payback." And so, you know what? I don't need you to come out there. I can prove by myself that I am the best in the world. And pretty much, like I said, dump Paul Heyman right then and there. But uh, it was a, uh, you know, I was able to follow the promo to a point, and yeah. but. Like I said, it was a very decent promo, and the fact that it just looks like WWE in this promo to me looks like you said, you know what? The last we kind of they kind of pulled in my eyes a Chikara. The yeah. last the, the 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 first half of this year of 2013 never happened. CM Punk is still a face, and Alberto Del Rio is still a heel. It's like, yeah. that's pretty much what it is. That's pretty much what it is. It's like we were in an alternate I, reality for about six, yeah. the first six months of this year. Yeah. It, oh. Now now the stars have realigned and everything is back to effing Norman. Or normal. Norm, Norman. Why did I sound like Rugrat? Oh, yeah. Norman? There, 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 there is a difference, guys. Chicago doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, well, um... As we, get ready, as we get ready to open up, uh, look at the first match of the night. It was a big surprise. Now, now, Chris, we were all expecting the uh, return bout. Wayne Barrett uh, cashing his rematch clause for the Intercontinental Championship. It was that was it was advertised 
But another thing that was advertised, Chris, was the fact that we had a Vicky Guerrero had a big surprise, and boy, did she ever have a big surprise for for Wake. Exactly. When we, well, when I heard that music hit and saw um, Captain Charisma, yes, that's right, Christian came back. I was, I, I leapt out of my chair praising the Lord, saying Christianity still exists for bringing back Christian. So, um, I, so, and, ba and basically he went over because, you know, he's a returning superstar. He has to go over. Your, your score for the match? Five out of five. <laughs> Jay. James, up next, continuing the rivalry between Damian Sandow and Sheamus, we have this incarnation of this match, a handicap match, team of road scholars in the form of Damian Sandow and Cody, I worship Adolf Hitler Rhodes, taking, <laughs> taking on the Celtic warrior Sheamus. Talk about this match. Um, basically in the beginning it was dominated by Team World Scholars and uh, how they used the double team to their advantage. Um, and then Sheamus got mad and then he started dominating the match himself um, throughout the point. And then the ending was that uh, Sheamus was uh, um, preparing for his roll kick on Cody Rhodes. But then when he was going, running for the roll kick, Damian Sandow came out of nowhere, rolled Seamus up for the one, two, three. Your win is Team World Scholars. And at the end, we have poor Cody Rhodes getting bro kicked in the middle of the ring while Damian Sandow's up on the ramp just looking on. We had Randy Orton and Daniel Bryan next. Now, the WWE fans had the chance to vote on the app on which stipulation a no disqualification, a no count out or two out of three falls. We, we get to this match, Randy Orton and Daniel Bryan. Randy Orton backstage cutting a promo backstage while on the WWE up saying that tonight he was gonna prove that Daniel Bryan was the, uh, the indeed the weak link. And this wasn't, in all intents and purposes, a good match, but there, there were some spots in that match, Chris, that to me, it, well, there was a bit of controversy at the end. I mean, yeah. the, the referees actually had to stop it. I, I mean, you know. They, they, they had to call off the match. Um, Daniel Bryan appeared to be injured, um, and the doctors were checking on him, and the doctors determined that they did not want Daniel Bryan to continue and for the ref to ring the bell. Uh, now, whether or not he has a legit injury, I mean... I think, in my opinion, he might have a legit injury um, to the ribs, I'm thinking. But I, I'm not, I can't be entirely sure. Well, it was reported later on in the evening on commentary that they're saying that Daniel Bryan's been diagnosed with a stinger. Hmm. So, but they said he'll be ready to go for a Friday Night SmackDown. And mm. boy, when they announced uh, the matchup for Friday Night SmackDown being... Daniel Bryan versus Dean Ambrose. Um, that is just going to be ju just as good, if not better, than last yeah. week with Daniel Bryan versus Seth Rollins. I mean, but, uh, well, that is something to look forward to. That actually makes you want to watch Friday Night SmackDown there, if, if I do say so myself. Um, scoring the match, I'm going to give it um, the match a 4 out of 5. I will give it a 4.5 out of 5, but... One, one thing I, I just don't understand, you know, is uh, actually is, you know, we, we hear them on commentary, you know, saying that Daniel Bryan was diagnosed with a stinger. Now, could have been could it have been the spot w with the suicide dive and when Randy Orton stepped aside and the, the way his head and his neck kind of compounded or, or collided with the security railing on the outside? Could you think could it have been at that point where they uh they saw that you know Daniel Bryan's injured. He's got a stinger. We got to stop the match. It certainly is one that's definitely realistic. Just looking at all the other things, he never really took a pretty direct blow to the head. So I have to say that it was probably that. In which case, we know who to blame. And who would that be? Orton. 
He could have slowed him down, surely. So he didn't hit the barrier in such a way. Hey, Billy, can I talk about what happened next? Oh, you're more than welcome to talk about AJ Lee to come out. Yes. Came out, came out and started talking about her win over the Diva Championship. Then she says there's no Diva and there's no woman back there in that locker room who can match up to me or is even half the woman that I am. And, and Q Stephanie McMahon coming on out, basically telling her that um, it's time that AJ started acting like a champion. And, of course, AJ tried to manipulate. and But Stephanie came back with the, with the checkmate, basically, saying that she is the um she is the queen of manipulator or whatever and um aj tried to put uh, a man nobody does crazy better than this man yeah yeah you think you've seen crazy you haven't seen him look mad crazy a aj and aj tried to like put down mcmahon and mcmahon basically said come up with your own material and um, then we see the face um, divas come out, and uh, Kate along with Caitlyn, and Caitlyn starts to congratulate AJ. But then we see her run into the ring and start beating down AJ. And ladies and gentlemen, if you expected to see to never see porn again, but after. Edge and Lita's live in-ring sex celebration. Get ready, because we actually had a nipple slip. Yes. I had a wardrobe malfunction. Caitlin had a nipple slip, and um, and ba- and and WWE because they are so because they fail on censoring, censored about three seconds too late. Because he's so obsessed with nipple slips, he neglected to mention the fact. That Caitlin did start to congratulate Caitlin. Only Stephanie came up. Caitlin says, started to congratulate uh, Caitlin. She started yeah, congratulating but. herself. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> if, if you let if you let me get a word in Android and not be obsessed about nipple slips, I might be able to remember what I'm going to say. So how how she? Well, 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 Caitlin well, well, starts well, talking, well, but well, Stephanie let... interrupts her and says, "Don't you dare any of you interrupt me again." And then heads backstage. Because that is key to what comes up later. Definitely. And ladies and gentlemen, this part of WGS TV has been brought to you by Mick37's Word of the Day. Mick, what is your Word of the Day today? And the establishment turn is nipples. <laughs> <laughs> King- is that an ointment with sore points? <laughs> Kane gets his rematch with Dean Ambrose for the United States Championship when lo and behold, uh, James, it just took the exact same typical shield route we have seen so many times. Yeah, it's basically it's the same thing. Kane, uh, Kane was getting his damage on Ambrose and then, the, and then uh, you know, Kane with the control and the shield comes out through that triple team. Daniel Bryant was not there for one, for two reasons. One, he's injured, and two, before the the only two match, basically both Daniel Bryan and Kane basically this is it for Team Hell No, because Daniel Bryan wants to go for the WWE Championship, Kane wants to go for the WWE Championship. So, so yeah, so basically. So basically, King got the triple pop off from this year. Also, no worth mentioning from this is again another previous backstage segment with <clears throat> one of the McMahons, except this time it's, you know, Triple H, so he's partly a McMahon. Uh, earlier on in the night, he was, you know, talking with Vicky, who was obviously happy about arranging the CM Punk Del Rio match, with Triple H saying, yeah, um, when did you, what was the main event before you arranged that? And she was like, oh, well, I brought Christian back. And then he was like, hasn't he been cleared to come back for over a month and a half? And then, she was, and then he was like, oh, this stuff you were saying about RVD, whose idea was it? Both Brad and Vicky's head was there. And he says, well, 
considering I was the guy that signed the contract for him, I'd never heard him mention either of your names. And then right at the end, he was talking about how S.H.I.E.L.D. needs to be reprimanded for their reprehensible actions kind of thing. And also, what a genius move it was to have 3MB on the card. <laughs> so, yeah, the S.H.I.E.L.D. did their stuff. And after that, considering it's not in the notes that's been put up by Billy, just to fill in the blanks, Vicky's backstage is just about to reprimand them until Vince shows up, says, good job, guys. And so they get let off. And Vince goes, I never liked Kane anyway. And this is the thing that's, it, it will keep going on throughout the whole night. It's an interesting angle going on. But next. Next up, the guy with the, the moustache made of marijuana. <laughs> that he likes to curl and curl and well, curl again. Well, before we get to that, James, your score for Keen, uh, Kane and Dean, Dean Ambrose? Uh, one out of five. Too predictable. Wow. Yes, Zeb Coulter comes out and starts to uh, basically cut a promo basically now. You know, we haven't seen Jack Swagger in several weeks on WWE programming, and apparently they need someone to replace him, in a sense. And the guy they got for that is Antonio Cesaro. God. Taking on the Studley Man Ashley's favorite wrestler of all time, one of the best WCW yeah. television champions of all time in the form of William Regal. Hey, Zeb Coulter, you know, he's talking about how about Alberto Del Rio not being born in this country, and then he chooses Antonio Cesaro. What hey, the hell? He brought up the fact that when you're in desperate times, desperate measures mean some strange bedfellows. Or worth that effect. He said, you know, alliances you may not expect. Seriously, a switch. Cesaro hits the neutralizer on William Regal after the match was over. They bring out the don't tread on me snake flag and they cover William Regal in it and they start doing their weed the people uh, chants and that's pretty much how they end it. Now, if, if, yeah, if, but when it comes to Cesaro, it makes more sense than Jack Swagger because I can understand it. <laughs> uh, three and a half out of five. I would have given it just a three out of five, but the fact that William Regal's in there and R Regal just... Totally reeks of awesomeness, being one of the best WCW television champions ever. It gets a 3.5 out of 5. Now, up next, John Cena starts to come out and cut a promo, actually, about his win over Ryback. And then he starts saying that he appreciates the audience for their honesty. You know, he actually called the audience their, you know, his favorite superstar. But he wanted to speak to that core group of fans who always stood by, uh, by him through thick and thin and wanted to thank him and skip saying the the champ is here but one of the major stu stories actually was concerning mark henry yeah twitter over the last couple of days he's been putting some <clears throat> interesting tweets saying you know he's talked with his friends and the family and it's gonna be you better be there in cedar heights michigan and uh kind of stuff that is hinting that he was retiring certainly which I was I was honestly thinking why would somebody like him retire because he's still you know if he if he retires Big Show should have retired three years ago in all honesty so Mark Henry comes out as seen as finished his speech with a pair of boots and leaves them on the uh, entrance ramp. Comes to the ring, does a great five minute speech about all his stuff, how, about his time, you know, like uh, sexual chocolate. And then it's about his family, and then he says, Look, the hand wasn't a member of my family. It was just story. No, man. no, no. The, it was something along the lines of there, he starts talking about his wife, and some of the fans started chanting Mae Young. <laughs> oh, that's what it was. Yeah. Um, but yeah. And you find it no. You, you find it no. Not May Young, fool. <laughs> this is where I really kind of got wind about. Well, 
I got wind of something that might be up because he asked John Cena to stay there. Because obviously we're still looking for somebody to fill the void of who's going to challenge John Cena. And then he brings up, you know, have I got any regrets in life? Well, I've won the heavyweight title, I've won the intercontinental title, I've won the US title, I've won the ECW title, I've won the tag titles, you know. I've won it, I've won pretty damn everything. And then says, uh, he announces his retirement and Cena gives him the WWE title, you know, to pose with it, because obviously he's retiring, isn't he? And, not, not only that, it was as a show of respect. Yeah, and then celebrates with Cena, and then Cena goes in for a hug, and he picks up World's Strongest Slam, takes off his, like, oh, go ahead, Ash, takes off his jacket and everything, and is like, hey, I got more in the tank, goes, goes, basically t t takes the WWE title, looks at it, throws it on Cena, picks up his jacket from outside the ring, Walks up, picked up his boots again from the ramp, and simply and says his, his famous catchphrase, that's what I do. By the way, later that night, he was granted a WWE Championship match against Cena at Money in the Bank. This, this was brilliant. This, the way everything planned out, the way that Mark Henry executed the promo, the way he... he he, he did his job. Finally, we've gotten to see the side of Mark Henry we've always been wanting to see. We've seen him being physical in the ring with his wrestling. We've never really, in my honest opinion, seen him sell it on the microphone in a promo. And Mar when Mark Henry pulled what he did tonight, to me, was one of the best sell jobs I have ever seen him do. I mean, he fooled everybody. He fooled, and I was telling everybody, you know what? There, there are two possibilities. One, he's actually retiring. And two, if he's not retiring, then this was one of the, this move was just absolutely freaking brilliant because it the way they play, played the audience they played the viewing audience they played all of us it was just absolutely a work of art and i gotta say you know what matt gonna get a slammy uh, uh, you know what i got i gotta agree with chris it's, it's gotta fall possibly maybe with an omg moment yeah possibly but the, like i said Mark Henry ever being able to sucker everybody into believing that he was retiring was just really, really good. So I'm, I'm going to give bad props to Mark Henry. Five out of five. Same here. But Chris, up next. Um, well, Curtis Axel, the fluke, so uh, dubbed by the Shining Star, Rick Star, was in action once again. With a jobber. And not only just a jobber, but Sin Cara. And that, that's what going to say a jobber with his own lighting. But you know what, you know what Chris? I'm going to go ahead and uh, and save you the job of reviewing the match. Because I'm going to uh, sum up the match. Zero out of five. Yes. What? I mean, ever since Sin Cara has come into the WWE, he has been the king of f -ups. Actually, we forgot a match. Nah. Oh, yeah, the uh, Chris Jericho <laughs> match. He, well, well, with the Wendy's, with the Wendy's girl. Um, <laughs> Heath Slater well, versus... Well, let me ask you this. Uh, w w would you rather talk about Curtis Axel and Sin Cara, or do you want to talk about Chris Jericho and Heath Slater? I mean... Well, let me put it. Let me put it to you like this: With Chris Winner Jericho, of that match was Chris Jericho. Yeah, hands down, because he actually absolutely decimated 3MB, which was basically just a filler match, in my opinion, the way it was played out. But the thing about it: last night on a pay-per-view, you wrestled one of the best in the world in CM Punk. Very next night on Raw, you're in the ring with fucking Heath Slater. Well, in honor of 3MB. I'm going to give it a one 1.5 MB out of 5. 
<laughs> James, up next, uh, backstage, um, Vicky Guerrero is just... Well, we're seeing the premise of something starting now with Mr. McMahon, Stephanie McMahon, and, and Triple H. Talk about what happened. Welcome to the family feud! Um, dun, 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 dun. Basically, McMahon was with Vicky and Batman. I was just like, you know, what you gotta do? And then they made the WWE title match. And then, you know, Stephanie McMahon comes in and stuff like, you know, it's Raw. What's, what's, up, what's wrong with, uh, you know, Raw's going all crazy and hectic, you know? And then Triple H came in and it's like, you know, what? You were supposed to do something with the Shield, you know? So basically, um, Triple H say, you have to listen to me. Walks off. Big man say, no, no. You have to listen to me. He walks off. Because he's like, yeah, uh-huh. don't listen to him. You know who to listen to. And yeah, that uh, Vicky had to listen to her. So basically, this is more of, like, as I say, a family feud. Basically, it looks like Big man, Vince Big man is going to be the heel. Triple H is going to be the face. And Stephanie may be like the tweener. The, uh, yeah, the tweener of the two. So. Mm, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, now, main event was CM Punk and Alberto Del Rio. Uh, before the matchup took place backstage, Paul Heyman uh, came out and said, you know what, CM Punk, those people might not understand, but I understand and I support your decision, and then, and then hugs him, and, you know, we were all thinking, you know, what exactly was Paul Heyman doing? Because Paul Heyman is not, you know, typically the nicest guy. Doesn't take too kindly to being snubbed the wrong way. Um, I mean, look back at what happened with him in TNN. But um, anyway, matchup, matchup came about. CM Punk hits the go to sleep. And before he could grab out Del Rio and get the pin, Del Rio had fallen. His momentum took him outside and where Del Rio ended up getting counted out. But uh, when uh, got the leader of Team Gooch, Mick Thirty Seven is here. Uh, but when uh, Mick, when Del Rio got up to the uh, the, the the staging area, he had a uh, a very a very unusual guest waiting for him, didn't he? Dolph Ziggler proceeded to kill him at the ramp. <laughs> well, <that'd work. laughs> yeah, but Mick. <laughs> Yeah, but Mick, that left CM Punk alone, and he uh, he too had a guest, didn't he? Brook Laser. <laughs> it turned him into mashed potatoes. <laughs> After grabbing a mic and almost turning everybody into mashed potatoes. <laughs> yes, which kind of leads us to believe now, now this possibly now the start of a. Punk Lesnar feud, one that's been heavily rumored uh, since Punk came back, or the announcement of Punk's return, that that we're possibly gonna have a Punk not only turn face but have a feud with Brock Lesnar. So, but so, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give that main event a four out of five. Overall score on Monday Night Raw this week, it's gonna get a four out of five from me. Uh, the opening with Alberto Del Rio, CM Punk, and Paul Heyman, I thought it was good. Uh, the return of Christian to the WWE, he looked in great phenomenal shape, defeating Wade Barrett. Wade Barrett, uh, that's pretty much, I don't know uh, who's lower at the moment in the WWE, Wade Barrett or The Miz. Uh, Team World Scholars defeating Sheamus in a 2 one handicap match, again, furthering the rivalry between Sheamus and Damian Sandow. Now, I don't see where WWE's going with this, with this rivalry with these two, but they're obviously going somewhere. Randy Orton and, uh, defeating Daniel Bryan by referee stoppage. Yeah, you heard me right, referee stoppage. Um, we're trying. We're still trying to really figure out what at what point did the uh, WWE feel that they had to stop the match. Uh, you guys heard us earlier. Possibly the suicide dive when Randy Orton stepped out of the way and the way that Daniel Bryan landed against the security ring. Now we're not saying that's the definite spot. But more than likely, that's probably what it is. Uh, Rain, uh, the uh, the second one, AJ Lee St- and Stephanie McMahon. That was a, um, I guess, a very highly unusual segment. WWE really now involved in the McMahons, who have turned heel for about the 500,000th time in the WWE. And then, of course, and of course, uh, 
bringing Caitlyn out there and on the uh, the face divas, but it was really more about AJ Lee and Caitlyn, that's for sure. Um, Antonio Cesaro joining up with Z well, well, Kane and Dean Ambrose. Again, it was just so typical. Um, Antonio Cesaro joining up with Zeb Coulter and defeating William Regal. Like I said, I'm giving mad props to Mark Henry pulling off that promo. He suckered everybody including me and i'm not ashamed to say that because that meant he was that good on the promo um curtis axel and sincara for about the ninth time in the past what three weeks uh that's all i'm gonna say about that and then the main event with cm punk and alberto de rio cm punk winning by count out and uh Dolph ziggler with his face turn which we've all been wanting to see for the longest yeah. time attacking uh, Alberto Del Rio. Man, when he did, did that initial attack, Mick, man, he launched himself like a rocket, you know? Uh, Brock Lesnar returning to attack CM Punk, kind of confirming our suspicions about, uh, you know, the Punk face turn and then the feud between Punk and Brock Lesnar. So, in essence, this was a good uh, Fallout show from payback and as far as i'm concerned that's why i'm giving it a four out of five actually um i want to start with you uh, what about what are what is your score and overall thoughts on monday night raw four to four and a half i thought it was one of the strongest roars that wwe's had in years because you've had multiple storylines yeah. The multiple strong storylines. You've got the AJ Caitlin thing. You've got the McMahon seemingly in their own civil war. You've got Mark Henry winning an Oscar. You've got Ziggler wanting revenge for Del Rio's actions. You've got Punk seemingly possibly in a feud with Heyman or certainly with Lesnar. Um... You've even got the Miz Curtis Axel thing, which could develop into something good. You know, you've got Mol and even the Cesaro Coulter thing. At least it means Coulter now has a purpose for being there again. So, overall, you have to. I, I'm actually going to give it a four, out, four and a half out of five because, true, we had the Kane, you know, 30 second match kind of thing. But that was done for storyline purposes. Because she could have done something, but Vince stopped her. And that ties into the whole McMahon taking over the asylum. Mm. Definitely. Uh, let's go to Chris next. Chris, your overall score and thoughts on Monday Night Raw. I, let me just say, very awesome Raw. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It had, it, it had basically... Like what Ash just said, um, the only thing that keeps it from getting a five out of five, Sin Cara. Really, we had it. We had to have Sin Cara. And three so, MB. And three MB. So that's two po half points reducted, making it a full point, four out of five. All right, let's go to James next. James, your overall score and thoughts. For me. It uh, I'm not gonna go by match by match, but for me, it's, I give I give it a four, five out of five. Um, how Del Rio, you know, made it full, his full fledged heel turn. How uh, CM Punk, um, you know, got, became more face. It, it, you're you're right. You know, it, it's basically like forgetting the last, well, not six, but the last like, uh, you know, twelve. Uh, not not twelve. Uh, last eight months you know how you know punk with all this big heel i want respect now he's this face again what the heck but you know it's it's doable because this is what a lot of the fans want is that face punk and how he's gonna be in a feud with lesnar is kind of it's interesting but it was shocking that lesnar came back at this time mm. because, you know, because not a lot of people would you know thought same thing with christian you know christian returning not a lot of people even saw, you know. Yeah, it was a high priority, but nobody knew, like, how, you know, you know when he's coming back, how soon is he coming back, you know, he came back tonight. Um, the segments with um, the Diva, I, I just, 
understand like the 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 face divas. I kind of, but I don't. But it was just more for AJ, like how AJ is with like, oh, I'm the greatest divas champ, even though she held the title for one day, or just one night, right now. Um, and Stephanie McMahon is like those two with those two. That, that was actually an interesting promo. You know, I respect that. Now the WWE has now emphasis on the divas giving them mic time and um, like how AJ does it, but also kind of brings up the question now that if Ziggler's face and AJ's heel, huh, how how does that work? No, oh? I'm sensing a breakup coming soon. Okay. I'm sensing they're both tweeners. And I'm sensing what I want to know now from you guys out there, the viewers and subscribers. Your thoughts on Monday Night Raw this week. Be sure you put your comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and favorite this video. Chris Rogers is the master of Rockin' Waves 11294. Chris, where can fans check you out? You can check me out uh, at youtube.com slash chrismaster1 where you can find basically any effing thing uh, that comes to me and uh, yeah, it gets turned into a video, including former workers making an ass of themselves. Coming soon. And you can also check me out at rockinwaves.com. Rockinwaves.com, fully endorsed by Mick37's Word of the Day. Mick, once again, what is your Word of the Day? Anti-disestablishmentarianism nipples. <laughs> We have an Instagib game show guru, James and the Big Easy. James, what you got coming up? Um, not much. I'm the I may go randomly live later on this week. If I'm not, then you go to the Big <laughs> MVP. So he also do the game show too. And there's also a couple others. Like um, I'm gonna, you know, cheap plugs for Studio O uh, Studio O Six. <laughs> He's actually the creator of the game shows that we uh, play. So sometimes he li he's live also. But, you know, me out at uh, instagive.tv slash chatboy504 or instagive.tv slash MVP. Also, don't forget to subscribe to youtube.com slash WrestleGamer and youtube.com slash TV Network. So for the studling man, actually, the leader of Team Gooch, the master of disaster, Mick 37, the master of Rock and Wheels 11294, Chris Rogers, and our Instagib game show guru, James and the Big Easy. I'm the Wrestle Gamer. Double B, Billy Boudreau, saying thank you very much for watching. We also like to remind everyone that GCW presents the Rockin' the House Weekend with our very special guests, Ricky Morton and Robert Gibson of the Rock and Roll Express. Friday, June 28th at the Station Bar and Grill in Broussard, Louisiana. Saturday, June 29th at the KC Hall in Plaquemine, Louisiana. And Sunday, June 30th at the American Legion Hall in Abbeville, Louisiana. For more information, please call 337-251-0546 or visit gcw-golfcoastwrestling.com. Why can't every ambulance in the world have an entrance through the roof? Start answers. My name's Andrew Weatherall.